Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build this scrolling image gallery in Webflow with GSAP Scroll Trigger. So let's get started. Hey there, Webbay. We can actually build this as a CSS only solution, but the unfortunate thing is that some of the properties required for background image that we need are not supported on mobile. So let's go ahead and link up a hotel lobby section here, and I'm gonna drag this up above and I'm gonna expand everything and zoom in just one for you. Let's select the collection item and I'm just gonna scroll down here and we'll add a background image. I want this to be fixed. I don't want it to tile and I want it to cover everything. So we can kind of start seeing our background image. And if we go over to settings here, we can get the BG image from the image field there. Oh, we're starting to see this now, but we need to give it some height information. So let's make each one 100 dynamic viewport heights. And now when I play and I scroll, I'm already getting that effect. So pretty cool. And if we get to the end here, let's make sure that works. It does too. All right, I'm just gonna open this up on my phone now and I've got this on Chrome. And you can see as I'm scrolling here, we're not getting that effect that we wanted. So it's really unfortunate, but this fixed property background attachment fix is not supported on mobile for whatever reason. So we have to do this with GSAP. Now the page setup is actually a little bit different here. We're not going to use position fixed. If we look at the CMS item class here, you'll see I have overflow set to clip. This is important because we're gonna be translating an image as a child down while we move the wrapper element or the div up. So it's gonna actually look static, but we're basically moving a window and moving the contents of the window at the same time. They're just offset so that it looks like it's static. Anyways, so we can see our item. This is considered our window here. And this is now position absolute, and that's to make everything stack on top of each other. And that overflow clip is so that nothing outside of the window shows. And then in there, now we have a heading. I've just added some text to make a little bit more of a real scenario here. So this is position absolute down to the bottom right. And then our image here is also position absolute to cover everything. So this is just so that it takes up the whole space of the window, which again is the item. Now, since that's absolute, we'll go ahead and set position relative on our list here. We'll add a height of 100% and then we'll add our height information to the wrapper. So the wrapper is going to be 100 dynamic viewports here. Those are the main differences. And we see if we scroll now in Webflow, we're just going directly into the next section because all of these item images are on top of each other with that position absolute property. If we pop into the page settings real quick, we can see that I'm adding my code inside of the head tag with a type module. And right now I'm just serving it locally, but for the clonable, I'll have the code copy pasted inside of the script tag here for you. So don't forget to publish this now with these changes. All right, for the code here, we're loading the GSAP object from the Skypack CDN. We're also pulling in the scroll trigger plugin and registering that plugin right here. Now let's get started by grabbing a reference to all of the items. We're gonna use the query selector all method, which returns a node list. We'll store that in this items variable. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is loop over all of these and set our initial conditions. So we're going to use the for each function here. And that takes an anonymous function, which gets these parameters, the item and the index in that node list. And we'll do our initial setup right inside here, this function definition. So what we want to do is the very first one we want to keep in the place that it is, right? That one is basically not transformed in any direction. Here, we're going to be working with Y transforms, like I said, with that window effect. So if index is not equal to zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the item or that window down to Y percent of 100. So we're pushing the window down and we're going to push the image up. So what's gonna happen is the window's coming up while my face is coming down and then all of a sudden it's gonna line up and be right at where we want it to do. So really weird example for you, but that's what I got for you today. Now we'll set up our scroll animation and we'll define a function called scroll. This is just a function right here and we're gonna invoke it immediately and we'll define our GSAP scroll trigger inside of here. So let's go ahead, we'll create a timeline. And now a timeline takes an options object. That's what this is right here. And we're going to specify our options for this timeline. So let's give it that scroll trigger object, which again, takes its own options object, these two yellow curly brackets right here. And we're going to specify the trigger. That's the item with the class of wrapper. We're going to specify the start point, which is when the top of our wrapper or the trigger is at the top of the viewport. And we're going to define our end point. And now our end point has to be some sort of logical scroll distance. You could put really whatever you want here, but I think what makes sense is that since each item is a hundred dynamic viewport heights, we just take the length of that node list, multiply it by hundred and pass it as a percent now. This right here is using template literal syntax, which evaluates JavaScript right inside of these curly brackets here, which is a really crucial JavaScript fundamental. If you aren't familiar with those, then you should definitely check out my Patreon where I have a whole course on JavaScript fundamentals. Anyways, moving on here, let's go ahead and define the rest of the scroll trigger object. We're gonna set scrub to true. This makes it so that it follows the progress of our progress bar or the scroll bar, I guess I should call it. And we'll set pin to true so that elements are pinned to the top. And we're also going to add our markers here, but I'm gonna comment it out. You can just 
uncomment this if you want to see what the markers look like. We're also going to set a default ease and we'll set that to none. We set the ease to none here because the user shouldn't expect to have an ease on their scroll action. Now, the last thing to do is to set up the animation for our items. So let's loop over our items again. And again, we get the anonymous function here and we get the parameters of each individual item in that node list and the index. So for every item, unless it's the last item, we want to set up our animation. Our animation is going to move the window or what we're calling the item here to a Y percent of negative 100. And we're going to move the inner image. So we'll use item.querySelector, the image tag, and we'll set the Y percent on that to 100. So we're moving the image down while the window is coming up. And we'll use this little less than sign here as a position parameter to make sure that this tween starts at the exact same time that this tween executes. And we'll also have to take care of the next item. So that is kind of the current item, these two right here. But for the next item, we access index plus one. And so we're getting the next window or items here. And then we're going to set it to a Y percent of zero, have it start at the same time with this position parameter here. And we will also get the inner image and we'll set that Y percent to zero as well. So let's walk through this one more time real quick. So what's happening with these first two elements, we're targeting kind of the current item. So let's imagine the first window or image is showed on screen. We're going to translate its window up. So that's what that negative 100 Y percent is. And while that's going on, we're putting the inner image down so that it looks like it's a static element. But as that is concurrently happening, we're also getting the next item and bringing its window up. Remember, we set the initial states up here to be 100 on the window and negative 100 on the inner image. And so what this is doing is it's taking that next item and it's bringing it up to zero, the window at least, and it's bringing the image, which would be up here, down to zero. So back to its original state. We see that the effect that we get is this fancy translation going on and everything looks static, but we have this line drawing up. And what's really going on is an optical illusion in that two things are animating here, but it just looks static because they're animating in competing directions. Anyways, let's go ahead and speed that up to the bottom and we can see that we can have our content down here as well. So hope you enjoyed that video and looking forward to seeing you in the next one.